This video is brought to you by Gamefly.com. I rely on Gamefly for many of the console copies of games I test on the Potato Masher. You can rent 8,000 new releases and classics on most major systems, all delivered right to your mailbox. If you use this URL to sign up for a free 30-day trial, you can test out their service and help support my channel. The link is in the description, so go check it out. Today we'll be taking a look at Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One and the Potato Masher. If you don't know, the Potato Masher is a $375 PC custom built in 2014 and designed to compete with the PS4 for the rest of its life cycle, except when it competes against the Xbox One. The goal is not to pick on consoles, but to show that PC gaming can be just as good or better for the same money. There's more info in the description, and this is a long video, so let's get to it. Unfortunately, this is not a full, in-depth comparison as much as I wanted to make one. I know a lot of you were excited to see how the Potato Masher stacks up in Forza Horizon 3, and I want to see that too. However, the PC port of the game does not stack up to the Xbox port, so currently my hands are tied. As you may have seen in my video last week, at launch the PC version was too inconsistent to form any impressions about how the Masher performed. As this is one of the first Xbox Play Anywhere titles, and Forza games are typically well optimized on the Xbox, I was willing to give Playground games the benefit of the doubt if they could get a patch out within a few days that addressed the launch day issues. That patch arrived one week after launch, and while it has made the game much more consistent across both my personal computer and the masher, it is far from fixed. Forza and most upcoming Windows 10 exclusive titles don't support MSI Afterburner's overlay, which is how I normally monitor the system's performance. Forza runs in a borderless window, so I am able to easily tab in and out of the game to watch MSI Afterburner's graphs running on the desktop. That's a little more complicated than I'd like, but it's my best option right now, so that's what I'm going to do. The game's built-in optimization feature chose mostly low settings for the masher, but the game runs about the same at medium, and again with a mixture of medium and high settings. So, I recorded most of this footage at medium with dynamic optimization on. No matter what settings I chose, the GTX 760 in the Masher is maxed out pretty much all the time. CPU usage never went above 70% on any core for longer than a few seconds and it never spiked to 100%, so while CPU usage is high, that shouldn't be holding the Masher back much. RAM usage was also high, but fairly normal and stable. Still, the GPU is maxed out most of the time no matter the resolution or the settings, and it shows. This drive across the Outback that you've been watching was recorded at slightly different times of day on the Masher and Xbox, but the overall quality is fairly similar at medium settings, and the frame rate was steady at 30 FPS in 1080p, same as the Xbox. So, in theory, if this game is eventually fixed, it should compare very well across both platforms. With those same settings, I entered the same race on both platforms, and the Masher alternated between 30 FPS and the low 20s. The Xbox One was at a stable 30 the entire time. Granted, I didn't tweak the settings as much as I normally do on the Masher, but I don't think that's the problem. Something is using the GPU much more than it should be, no matter what else I change. To illustrate this problem, I drove up and down the coast at different resolutions and with capped and uncapped frame rates. I would like to say that I chose to restart the game each time I switched resolutions, for consistency, but in reality the game usually crashed to the desktop and I had to restart anyway. Up first is 1080p and medium settings at a capped 30fps. While there were a few frame rate drops near the end, the game was fairly stable, just like when I drove across the Outback. Changing nothing except the resolution and disabling the frame rate cap, I then tried 720p. I got between 35 and 50fps. That's what you'd expect, right? I mean, 720p at medium settings at sub 60fps and with the GPU maxed all the way out is not great performance, but it runs better than 1080p, which is what you'd expect. Well, to further confuse things, here I am driving up the same bit of coast in the same car at the same time of day, with the only change being the resolution, which is now 1024 by 768 The game now runs in the low to mid-20s. Yes, that's about half the frame rate I was getting at a slightly higher resolution just a minute earlier. This is what I saw across the board with Forza Horizon 3, and the general consensus online is that the game's performance varies this wildly for many, many people. The game is gorgeous, and it runs so well on the Xbox One that it's frustrating to not be able to replicate that performance on a PC that's definitely more powerful than the hardware inside the Xbox. Even lowering the visual settings all the way down doesn't help. Sure, the frame rate gets better overall, but it still varies wildly and consistency isn't possible. The skeptical among you might think I'm just making excuses for the masher, which I would definitely understand. 
After all, if the Master's GPU is maxed out all the time, that just means it's too weak, right? Well, I'm seeing the same thing on my personal rig with the GTX 980 Ti, but less severe. Settings that are mostly stable at 4K and 30fps will still occasionally drop into the low 20s for a play session, and then be fine after a restart. Sometimes I'll go 5 or 6 play sessions and everything's totally fine. I have enough GPU power to brute force performance if I drop the resolution or visual settings and cap at 30fps, but I still find myself fiddling with the settings almost every play session when there's an issue. Unfortunately, the problems don't stop there. The Masher has 2GB of VRAM, so it's going to be close to full most of the time in this game. That's perfectly fine as long as there's no stuttering, but the game doesn't seem to realize that. I continuously get low video memory warnings on screen, even if I ask it to not give me the warnings again. These warnings started when the usage went above about 1.7GB, which is nowhere close to dangerously high. Even maxed out, the VRAM never caused any stutters that I could directly link to VRAM usage using MSI Afterburner, but the game still complained incessantly. The upgrades menu routinely drops into the teens and 20s on both the Masher and my computer, and this appears to be the case for pretty much everyone else online. Speaking of dropping, you can't lower the game's volume in the Windows Volume Mixer because it's not there. Universal Windows Platform apps don't show up in the Volume Mixer. If you can calm down from your blinding rage at the omission of such a basic feature, grab the third-party app Ear Trumpet from the Windows Store and it'll give you the functionality you never should have been without. The link is in the description. On top of all of this, the Windows Store itself is a joke. Multiple times the game download hitched and then restarted itself, and it always restarted if I needed to pause the download. I had to pause more than once because there's no bandwidth limiter in the Windows Store and it tended to saturate my connection and cause problems. This download restarting was supposed to be fixed with a patch this week, but many users are still reporting issues. Many players, including me, are unable to join their friends for online play sessions, and the error messages are not very helpful. I've forwarded ports and reinstalled my Torito adapter and disabled unused networking connections and everything else that Xbox recommends and that I can find from Googling online, and I still can't play with my friends, which is odd because I can play with them in literally any other multiplayer game I own. To be fair, I had some of the same issues intermittently with Forza Horizon 2 on the Xbox One, and I am currently having the same problem with Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One, and I had the problems with Horizon 2 even when I lived at a different place with a different ISP, so it may be more of a Forza Horizon issue than anything else. So after all of those issues and all of that complaining, is there anything good about Forza Horizon 3? Yes, absolutely. The game is beautiful, and when it is running well, you can appreciate a fantastic open world with great gameplay and a ton of content. When it's running well, the performance seems demanding, but fair for such a large open world. The Xbox Play Anywhere functionality appears to be more or less flawless multiplayer issues aside. My progress synced between each system without me having to mess with anything, and it's nice to queue up a render on my personal rig, quit the game, swivel in my desk chair, and pick right back up where I left off on my Xbox. I'm very excited to try this with future Xbox Play Anywhere titles, providing they are better ports. Well guys, this is why you shouldn't pre-order games. It sounds like I'm being very negative about this game, and I understand that. The truth is, I love the game, but the technical issues are very frustrating and very inconsistent. I would love to do a full comparison, but right now I can't do a good job. If you have a powerful rig and are okay brute forcing performance and dealing with some inconsistency, you might really enjoy the game. If you have anywhere close to the minimum hardware requirements, stay away or play this game on the Xbox One where it does run well. It's nice to pay $60 and receive the game on both systems, but that's only really a bonus if it runs well on both systems. As it stands, Forza Horizon 3 joins Batman Arkham Knight, Mortal Kombat X, and a handful of other games as bungled ports that the Potato Masher is not capable at playing at acceptable settings at launch. Those other games have all been fixed, so hopefully the same thing happens with Forza Horizon 3, and if it does, I will absolutely revisit it. If you enjoyed this video, check out the original build video or any of the other Potato Masher videos linked on screen. This project was started by the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, so click the link to check us out. You can support this channel and the Potato Masher project by tossing me a few bucks on Patreon. It helps me test new games quicker and better. Thank you for your support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.